Hello and welcome back to another episode on the channel which discusses all things related to aviation. This is Angela Dube welcoming you back. I know it's been a while but yeah now and again we have to take some time off, focus on other things and keep grinding. But um, one has not really abandoned this channel. The channel is still alive and kicking but things have to be posted at some point when you need to go and handle um, other matters. And yeah, today we are talking about the altimeter, that little instrument that we use on an aircraft pilot to know about it. And uh, aspiring pilots will listen to this episode and they will, by the end of the episode, they would have learned what exactly an altimeter is. You know, an altimeter is what um, allows us to know how high we are um, in, 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 in the air when we're flying. It allows us to know what's the difference between um, the aircraft and a particular datum or a particular point of reference this could be you know sea level um, or, or, or the airfield elevation depending on what you have keyed into your altimeter i will explain this um, as, as, as i go along in the video just now so in our discussion of the altimeter we know that we've already said it gives us a sense of how high we are in relation to a particular um, threshold i mean this could be you know in relation to sea level depending on what you've keyed into your altimeter so what is an altimeter in other words you've seen the visuals i'm showing the visuals as we speak right now of what an altimeter looks like inside an aircraft an altimeter is an aneroid barometer which measures absolute pressure of the ambient air and displays it in terms of feet above a pre-selected pressure level now we know that when we climb when an aircraft climbs the pressure will drop at the rate of one hectopascal per 30 feet so every 30 feet that uh, an aircraft climbs it loses or the the recorded de decrease in, in in the pressure in the in the in the air is equivalent to one hectopascal um, per that particular uh, amount of height that has been covered so that ultimately does not know where we are we have to tell it where we are we need to give it a datum in other words as much as it can tell us you know a sense of how high we are in relation to sea level or how high we are in relation to the airfield we need to give it that datum otherwise it will not know where we are so what do we use then to give it that datum we use what we call q and h in other words the local pressure that we have at a particular place so every airport will have you know um, um, the met office will generate the readings on what the qnh is at that particular level and then they will communicate this to pilots and pilots will then key this in to the altimeter so once the altimeter has been given the qnh it knows that it has to measure this above sea level so if you are sitting on the ground at an airport and you key in the qnh it will give you the elevation of the airfield above sea level so let's let's assume it didn't know what the QNH was in order to find this out. You could actually key in the elevation of the airport itself. And as you key in the elevation of the airport itself, let's say it's let's use Springs for instance, Springs are filled and which is about uh, 5,400. If you key in 5,400 feet into your altimeter, if you notice the window that displays your QNH, it will move to the current QNH at that particular time in those prevailing atmospheric conditions. Now you ask yourself, what if I take off from Springs Airfield and a colleague of mine takes off from Pilanesberg International Airport and we fly, um, you know, I'm going to Pilanesberg, he's going to Springs Airfield. What happens because the two airfields are taking off from, obviously you have different QNHs. Um, how do we then avoid a mid-air collision? How do we avoid not getting the wrong readings and thinking we are operating at 5,000 foot or operating at 7,500 foot when in fact the readings are lower or higher than that? Now to avoid that, we need to then standardize or uniformize what we key into the altimeter. The aviation bodies, the authorities that control aviation came up with what they call ISA, the standard um, atmosphere international standard atmosphere where the pressure altitude correction where the, where the pressure is regarded as uh, as a reading of 10 13.25 hectopascals once a pilot takes off and passes through what you call a transition altitude they then key in instead of the local qnh they took off with they then key in 10 13.25 hectopascals into their altimeter the reading will now change from being altitude to become a flight level 
So both pilots will not be flying in reference to flight levels. It then makes the air readings uniform. In other words, what you read is a flight level in your particular um, altimeter. The other fella in the other aircraft also reads an equally correct uh, reading because he's also flying on 1013.25. He's also flying flight levels rather than altitude. So that is why, how you then maintain the vertical separation between these two aircrafts. If they were not to key in 1013.25, then they would need to continuously update their Q energies. And this can be a cumbersome process if you fly um, from one airfield to another and you're, eventually, you're, you're continuously um, changing your Q energy to, you know, to suit prevailing conditions at that particular um, level that you're flying at. So the best thing then is to just go on to use the standard um, setting of 1013.25 uh, and th thereafter you're flying flight level rather than altitude. So whoever else is flying above that level, um, is flying above that transition altitude, is then flying the same, using the same datum as you are, meaning that your readings are all referenced to the same datum and therefore your readings are comparable, your readings, um, um, your altimeters read the same thing. So you can now rely on that vertical separation. If you're operating at flight level 100 and someone is operating at flight level um, 120, then you know that we are you know, safely separated and our readings can be relied on because we're not using uh, QNH, we're using 1013,25 as our datum. I hope that was an informative uh, short video there and if it was please do click the like button and uh, continue to follow us on social media um social media handles appear below and um yes thank you for all of you who have engaged with us on social media on various topics we've suggested topics that we could handle on this platform we'll endeavor to bring those topics to you as and when time you know allows us to um, but uh, yeah, continue to circulate these uh, videos, continue to circulate these links on your social media platforms in your community of aviators, whatever community you are in, continue to talk about this, to continue to share these um, videos and the link to these videos. It's the only way we can make Africa great again, it's the only way we can make, you know, our people grow in aviation. Until next time, Angela Dubert, thanking you and signing out. Cheers.